Hiya pals, it's your uncle Tony here. Today I will be bringing you a complete beginner's guide to Hobo Tough Life. Hobo Tough Life is a survival role playing game where you play as a homeless person in the streets of Praslav. You can play alone or team up in online co-op where you explore the streets, scavenge for food and supplies, beg, steal and do whatever it takes to survive the winter to come. In this beginner's guide, I will give you all the necessary information, tips and tricks to ensure you have a good start and you will know what to do when you embark on your journey. Let's start with the basics. When you open up your inventory, you will notice a lot of different icons on the right. Starting from the top, you have health, hunger, morale, energy, temperature, dryness, alcohol, poisoning, illness, number two, and odor. When you click on this tab right here, you can see a little more information about each and every one of these statuses. Let's go over them one by one. Health. Pretty self-explanatory. You start off at 100% and when it reaches zero, you die. Your health can decrease because of a lot of different reasons. You can get attacked, you can eat certain bad food, because of fall damage, or because another stat is decreasing your health. Low health may limit you in certain actions that you can do. However, your health can always be regenerated by using certain items such as bandages or medkits, by eating certain foods such as tasty grub, or by sleeping in certain spots with a healing bonus. I will recommend you to have at least some bandages with you on your journey, or else you'll die. And trust me, you can and you will die. Energy Your energy level is shown right here this little green bar, which you can also consider your stamina bar. Your energy level slowly decreases over time, the longer you're awake. The more it's decreased, the less stamina you'll have, which will stop you from being able to sprint and get beat up. To regain your energy, you can sleep at your base or use public benches to take a nap. Different public benches have different bonuses they can give you for napping on them for a certain amount of time. Take note that the temperature will determine how long you can sleep as you'll simply wake up when it's too cold. Certain consumables can also increase your energy level, however they almost always come with a little negative effect as well. Hunger You will need to consume food, whether it be scraps you find in the trash, grubs which you learn to make, or bread which you can find. Eating scraps or bad food will always have a debuff in some way, for example getting you poisoned or ill. Morale Probably one of the most important statuses in the game is your morale. It slowly decreases over time but will also decrease when you perform certain actions such as stealing. Once your morale gets under the 20% mark, you will start to lose health, so pay close attention to both or else you could die. To gain morale, you can choose between a few options. The safest in my opinion would be to buy a Play Guy magazine. It will cost you quite some money, but it has no negative side effects and gets you the faith buff. If you don't have the money to buy yourself a magazine, you can also smoke or drink alcohol. Keep in mind that you can become drunk and addicted to nicotine. Warmth Your level of warmth is something which can be quite difficult to maintain. The outside temperatures change throughout the day and with these changes, your hobo's temperature will be either comfortable or cold. Getting cold itself is no big deal. Make sure that you won't start freezing as this will drain your health. You can find or buy new clothes which increase your resistance to cold. Some food and beverages can make you warm as well. But the easiest way to make sure that you're warm is to look for the fire pits. They're scattered all across the map and by simply burning something in there will increase your temperature. I would advise you to either burn newspapers which really have no other use or wooden boards which will burn for a long time. Dryness At certain moments it can start to rain. You can take shelter or dry up at a fire pit. Staying wet for too long will get you the freezing debuff much faster but will make you lose your health. Alcohol The more alcohol you drink, the more drunk you get. The Being drunk will affect how other NPCs will respond and react to you. Drinking alcohol will also poison your body. You can sober up with certain consumables, such as kombucha 
or you can just wait to sober up over time. Poisoning. You can get the poison debuff by eating certain bad foods or consuming certain things such as drinks or too many cigarettes. Being poisoned also decreases your health. Like with the alcohol status, drinking kombucha will heal you, as will certain other consumables and time. Illness. Being ill can also have a negative effect on your health. You can get ill by consuming certain consumables or staying out in the cold for too long. Use medicine to get better or sleep. Number 2. I don't think I really need to explain this one too long. The more you eat, the more restless your bowels will get. Relieve yourself at a public restroom in exchange for a little cash. And go on with your life. Odor. The more you dig through trash, the more stains you get on your clothes, the more you start to smell. When you stink too much, this will have negative effects on your communication. People will not want to talk with you and stores can decide to kick you out and not help you. Use soap or wet wipes to decrease your stench or take a shower. Make sure your clothes are clean by wearing a new outfit or washing your current one at a laundromat. This will slow down the buildup of your odor stat. Now that we've discussed all of these, let's go back to the previous tab and take a quick look at the stats down here. Your attack stat determines the damage you do in fights. You can increase this by equipping different weapons or by training at the martial arts teacher. Your defense stat determines the damage you take in fights. Also increased by equipping different weapons or by wearing certain clothes. Your charisma stat determines how willing people on the streets are to talk to you. Having a higher charisma stat will give you a better chance at speaking, begging and stealing. The higher resistances you have, the less affected by some statuses you'll be. Having a higher resistance to the cold will keep you warm longer. Having a higher wet resistance will keep you dry longer. A resistance to poisoning will make sure you'll not get poisoned as quickly. And for illnesses, you won't get sick as quickly. When you start your game and wake up in the pit in that open area under the bridge, the first thing you'll want to do is look to your right and go talk to Maisner, who's close by. Speak with him. He will give you your first quest to play through the story of the game and teach you some of the basic mechanics to play. Maisner is your best friend, and I recommend you make sure he'll be your best friend as quick as possible. By regularly chatting with him and increasing your trust level with him, he will teach you some important tools and recipes to make your life easier. Maisner is also the one to go to after you've died to retrieve the items you have lost, for a small fee. On the other side of the pit, you'll find the first of many hobo camps in the game. These hobos, consisting of escaped prisoners, will also give you quests for your game. On the way over there, you can find all sorts of items needed for crafting in cabinets, in lockers, in the trunk of old cars. Look for them. Make sure you look everywhere. I mean everywhere. Talking to Drax will get you your first piece of furniture for your base. You can buy weapons from Kashi and going up the ramp after you've spoken to Leos, you can meet Ferenc, who will give you more quests for your journey. All over this camp are cabinets which will always give you food and alcohol, so make sure you check them every time you visit this camp. When you walk up the massive stairs across from the prisoner camp and walk a bit further, you can find the charity home, where you will encounter Sister Agnes. Try getting yourself familiar with the sister early on, as she can give you free clothing item or a free meal once per day. She can also let you use the shower, do your laundry, or go to the toilet there for cheap. The mini game is a skill check, one that you'll find yourself doing a lot when you're dumpster diving. The arrow moves from left to right, and you'll have to click when the arrow's in the green. You have three different difficulty levels. Easy, which has three green bars medium which has two and a hard one which only has one green bar you'll have to correctly time your clicking to finish the minigame the more you increase your dumpster diving level the less skill checks you'll have to do to retrieve the item if you fail a skill check you'll have to start over and it will decrease your health by a tiny amount so make sure you don't fail too many times or you'll get beat up the minigame also appears when crafting and while using a perk to open up a different conversation option However, failing while crafting decreases your energy, 
and failing during the conversation will just negate the action. In this game, it's important to always have money on you, whether it be to buy food, soap, clothes, whatever. Across from the prisoner camp, you will find the gypsy camp, consisting of only three people. You will want to speak to Langos, who will give you a job stealing metal. You can also go to the hotel and speak to the chef at the back entrance. After doing a few chores for him, you will earn 200 gold. Signing up at the labor office and checking in regularly for a part-time job will give you money, and fast. The jobs are never hard, and you can do them whenever you see fit. Just remember to go back afterwards to receive your payment. While digging through trash, you can also come across returnable bottles, which, as the name implies, you can return to a salesman or supermarket and get two gold coins per bottle. As you dig through trash, you can also come across scratch cards, which also give you money, if you're lucky. Every time you respawn after you died, you will always find one in your inventory as well. Scratch them as soon as you find them to see if you have a price. Go to a tobacconist and collect your gold. Another way of getting money is simply to beg. Talk to everyone you encounter on the street. And with a high enough charisma skill or some luck, you can convince them to give you money. The easiest place to do this in the beginning is at the train station, as there are always lots and lots of people walking there, so you're bound to make some money there. In my opinion, the first thing you should save up money for are a city map and a flashlight, which are 50 gold coins each. Buying these will make your experience of the game much and much easier. Buying a city map will change the way your map looks from this to this, which just makes finding certain quest objects easier. The game will get dark during the night in certain alleyways or inside certain buildings. You won't be able to see and could get lost. That's why I recommend you to buy a flashlight as soon as possible. There are a few spots throughout the city where you can set up a base. The easiest one to find is located behind Masoner. Only at a base you can open up your inventory and click on this tab to open up your storage. You can put all kinds of items in here that you don't want to carry with you. For example, craftable items or components. The items you leave here are safe and won't disappear when you die. You can fill up your base with structures and furniture, which you'll need to craft. You'll think of blueprints for these furniture when you find certain items. Crafting requires materials, which you can find dumpster diving or by demolishing certain items. You can craft at a crafting bench. You can find these at certain locations, mostly at a hobo camp, but always at one of your bases. The more furniture you craft and the more you put in your base, the more skill points you unlock for your base. The skill points you can earn for your base will be worth the trouble of going through all this hassle. For example, you can unlock a skill point which will regenerate your health or heal up your illness when you're sleeping. Increase your storage, increase your resistance, much more. So make sure you give your base some love and make yourself a home. Perks are actions that you can learn to do as you progress in the game. Some perks can give you more usable actions in the overworld. Others give you more options in conversations, and others will increase your skills. They are taught by NPCs you'll meet throughout your game, and they require you to have a high enough trust level with the character and will also cost you something, be it money or a specific item. And that's it. These are all the tips and information I can give you to make sure you have a good start playing Hobo Tough Life. If this guy was of any help to you, I would appreciate it if you'd give this video a like, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.